Hello there, my name is Will Patillo, and today I'm going to be demonstrating to you a evolution simulator that I built as a research project a while back. I am not going to be covering in this video exactly how it was built. The, for those of you who are interested, uh, this project is up on a GitHub, and I will link a description to that in the uh, in the video description below this. Uh, also, I've filmed a couple of uh, tutorial videos on building this project from scratch. It has been updated significantly since I filmed the last of those, so those are not complete, uh, but they serve as a good foundation. Uh, so anyway, yeah, today's just about demonstrating uh, what it is capable of. So I'll start out, and right here, this is my population. It's all randomized by width, height, and color as red, green, and blue. So each of these has five different traits. And this one over here is a target. So the idea of this evolution is that each one of these gets a reward based on how close they are to the target uh, along each dimension. And the most fit individuals uh, pass their traits on to two of the next generation, and then the least fit individuals don't pass any on. So if I just run this, I can see each generation, they're changing a little bit and pretty rapidly get close to the target. They're a little bit off, they're taller than they are wide, uh, but every once in a while they get a little bit closer. Here and there you see these little mutations and most of them just die off. Now I can see if I change the target, then they will gradually move to that new shape. See they gradually get wider and then there's a sudden change for uh, getting that color right. And every once in a while they'll just get a little bit closer. Change the target again. And there you go. Now r there's a couple of different parameters that I am using here. The mutations are just happening randomly. Each trait has a chance of changing to something completely different. And when a mutation happens, the end result is, is completely randomized. Uh, there's another option I can change right here from random mutation to drift. And I'll randomize the population a little bit at the beginning. And this one, instead of each trait most likely staying the same and having a chance of changing to anything, uh, each trait instead will drift a small amount up or down. Um, and there's limitations on, on how far it can drift. So right now I'm using a the maximum drift amount of 0 0.01. Uh, if I change this, say, to 0 0.05, then you're going to see it change a lot more dramatically. Um, you can see the larger the drift amount is, then you get a lot they get to the target much quicker when there's a wider drift. Uh, however, they don't get, they don't stay quite as close to the target. Uh, so right here, you can see a, a pretty good variation in amount of color and the exact shape even after they've basically reached it. Uh, whereas, if I use a drift amount back down to say 0.01. Uh, now they move towards the target much slower, but once they get there, they are much more uniform. I can set a similar kind of um, trade-off in how quick they get there versus how stable the end result is. If I go back to random mutation and increase the mutation chance, so say instead of 0 0.005, I go to 0 0.05, and now I change the target. And now I, yeah, I'm back into the random mutation form of evolution. And now you can see it reaches the target much quicker, but it's still kind of chaotic uh, even when it gets there. Now, one other variable I can work with here is right now it's the top 50% pass traits along to two, in, uh, two children of the next generation. I can change it to heavy selection pressure. And in this case, the top 25% will 
pass their traits on to um, f four of the next generation. And I find whether the selection pressure is moderate or heavy, uh, to me, I, I'm not really seeing a very big difference uh, between them. Anyway, the next variable up here is the inheritance type. So right now, each individual passes its own traits down. But that's not how most life on Earth works, or at least most complex life. Uh, in, you know, in the world, we use two different parents and who, combine, who uh, combine their genes together, and the offspring gets a mix of both of those traits. So I can simulate that by uh, going with inheritance type of um, two-parent inheritance right here, and I can again use random mutation, um, Change it again. So yeah, here I'm, I guess I'm seeing like a little. It looks a little bit more chaotic, but pretty similar uh, to when I was using a single parent inheritance. I can also go back to the drift form of mutation, and again that looks kind of similar to the uh, single parent drift mutation. Now, at this point in the project, when I had built it up here, I, I kind of had the question as to, well, if there isn't really all that much difference between you know, the ability to evolve towards a target in single versus two-parent evolution, then why is two-parent evolution so dominant in the real world? So to address that question, I first thought was, well, maybe it is a little bit faster, and I'm not just not seeing it. So I create a different scene right here to check on that. Uh, so here I have two different populations, and they are both evolving towards that same target. Otherwise, this population is totally independent of this population. It just allows a nice visual way to compare the two to see which gets to the target faster. I can also apply a certain amount of drift to the target itself. Uh, so if I run this, you'll see this target is gradually drifting around its shape. So this simulates a constantly changing environment. I'm take these two populations, make sure that they start at the same time. So population one, uh, that is the left side over here. I'm just going to be using single parent evolution, random mutation, uh, and then the properties are the same except for the inheritance type. So the Left side is using single parent, right side is using double parent. They're both using random mutation um, and same parameters. So now I'm going to run this. And if we watch it, uh, I'm going to maximize this so we can see things a little better. Well, you can kind of judge for yourself which you think is reaching the target quicker. And to me, these look about the same. The single parent might be a little faster, arguably, although it's, it's kind of it's hard to tell. Um, I can slow down the, the drift of the uh, environment to make, it, make them easier to, to catch up. So it's only going to change once a second. And maybe it might be a slightly larger drift amount. Watch this some more. And you know, if we just compare these, um, yeah, looking pretty similar in my opinion. Uh, in terms of how close they are to reaching this target. And sometimes this is a little closer, sometimes it's about the same as far as I can tell. Now let's continue this. If we just take these and switch the mutation type. So now instead of using random mutations, we're going to go with drift. And 
I'm going to slow the environment way down. So now they're all trying to get to this green state. And they're both drifting. And they appear to be closing in at about the same time. Let's test it again. I'll just uh, change the target. And now let's see. Let's see them race. Okay, they're both kind of expanding out, changing color from green to this teal. And it's got a ways to go on height yet. Um, but once again, there is no clear winner here. They're both kind of went from that small green square to the tall teal rectangle at about the same rate. Um, you know, if I had some other more precise metrics other than just I, I might be able to find that one is a little bit faster, but there's certainly nothing dramatic right here. So again, they, uh, looking at this in competition, the question as to why the two parent exists is still remains unanswered. So now I'm going to add in a new variable. Um, and that is going to be a disease. So I'll just tick this box and to make this active. And now what you'll see here is on each of these individual cells, there is this square green background. And what this represents is, um, well, for each individual in, in this population, the individual has its own uh, population or colony of germs that are living on it. And for each generation of an individual, the colony of 16 germs has four generations for every one generation of one individual. And the dynamic of the germ colonies is that they are evolving uh, using single parent drift mutation. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to switch these back to random mutation and change up the environment a little so that they're what they're going for. So while the individuals are trying to evolve to reach the target, the germs are trying to evolve to reach the individual. And then the average fitness of the germs has a negative impact on the fitness of the individual. Uh, let's also randomize these populations just for fun. And here we start to see a little bit of a difference. Um, so let's say if I deactivate the disease and get them, let them uh, evolve to get close to the target. And when I put it back active again, you'll see the effect. And this time what I want you to look for is how bright are the green backgrounds on the single parent versus the two parents. So a, a lighter, brighter green means the disease is very healthy and detracting significantly from the individual's health. Uh, whereas a kind of slightly transparent, darker shade of green uh, means that the disease is having trouble keeping up. All right, so they're all kind of closing in on that environmental target. Give them another moment. Okay, that's looking pretty close. Um, and right now, again, with the disease inactive, they're both reach the target about the same time. They get about as close, although there's a little more chaos over on the two-parent side of, of um, unhelpful mutations that immediately disappear. Now, I activate the disease, and initially, the disease is super healthy on both sides. But now we see the difference. The On the single-parent evolution, it's they're all staying at the target, and their disease is bright green. Whereas on the two-parent evolution, they're changing all over the place, kind of staying together. Like the, the change, see how they're all gold right now, and now they're all 
uh, gold rectangles, and in a moment they'll change to something else. I, here they are as white dots. They're constantly moving around, and because they're constantly changing, the disease is staying at a fairly dark green. Because it's kind of like if this changes a lot, then the population has a hard time keeping up. Likewise, if the individuals are constantly changing, their disease has a hard time keeping up. Now, this raises the question as to what's going on. Uh, why is the you know, two-parent spliced evolution behaving this way, whereas the single parent uh, isn't? And essentially, what, well, what these ones are doing is they have two competing interests. Once they're trying to reach this, you know, one goal is to reach this and stay stable. Another goal is to just change constantly. Um, and right now, with this slider right here, uh, this, this essentially says that the importance of evading the disease is twice as much as the importance of reaching the target. I can shrink this down to, say, one where they're equally important considerations. And now you'll see operates a little bit more, a little differently. Um, yeah, the disease gets a little bit stronger and these get a little closer to the target. Uh, once again, single parent unchanged. I drop the disease impact down to zero and now the two parent is behaving exactly like the single parent. So as, as this slides around, the behavior over here changes to adapt to the new requirements, whereas these don't. My guess as to what's happening is that the single parent, you know, drops down, hits the local minima, and gets stuck there, whereas the two-parent evolution, because it has a little more diversity and a little bit more dynamic, it explores a bit more, is able to get over this and then find the global minima, uh, which is this kind of balancing act that it's performing over here. Um, so that's my illustration as to that question I had about how evolution works. Um, once again, if you're, there's a few other settings that I didn't really go over here because they weren't super illustrative of anything. Um, but if you're curious about playing around with this or digging through the code to see how it works, I, I have it all up on GitHub, as I mentioned at the beginning. So hope you enjoyed this video. I don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see future ones like this. Um, I may complete the t uh, tutorial series if there's enough interest. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.